Hey there, MSPs and IT pros. Welcome to the Rocket MSP podcast, where we ask the tough questions. Today, my guest is Victor Lopez from FlexPoint, a payment solution provider that helps you automate your billing operations. Now, if you're new to the show, here's how it works. We're going to start with questions for us to get to know my guests and their services better. After Q&A, we're going to do show and tell, the segment where we get a demo of their product or service and get to ask even more questions about how it works. So without further ado... Hi, Victor. Hello, Steve. How, How are, are you, doing, you? man? I'm, I'm awesome. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's a uh, it's a beautiful day in New York. It's been yeah. extremely rainy for the last four or five days, and now it's the the sun's out. It's nice and cool, so I'm loving it. Now, where in New York are you in New York City? No, so I'm outside the city. So I'm about an, an hour north in like Westchester County. Um, okay. It's actually pretty rural. Um, more uh, more trees and horses than cabs and high tall tall buildings. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, I'm I'm in a suburb. I'm like uh, halfway in between from uh, Cleveland and Akron. Okay, so I can I can get to either city in about the same amount of time. Yeah. Um, and and that's great because we've got two different airports I can choose. Well, I was going to well. say access to multiple airports is always huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's always nice. So why don't you tell me a little bit about FlexPoint? What, what exactly do you do? Cause I, I said the buzzword version. <laughs> why don't you tell us yeah. what you really do? Yeah. So no. And so, so I guess before starting, Steve, uh, I, I've said this to you personally, but I, I love your podcast. I love how, you. uh, you know, you ask hard questions. <laughs> so it's, you know, it, it's really good. Uh, and I feel like a, a lot of good information. So, so yeah, so FlexPoint is a payments platform built exclusively for MSPs. So what does that mean? So we uh, help MSPs uh, automate their whole billing process from connecting to a PSA, to accounting software, and setting up things for uh, like auto pay um, and providing multiple payment options. So we do that in, in two different ways. So we have the MSP facing side of our platform, which is handles everything around automation, provides you a picture of your cash flow, allows you to do things like invoicing, adding payments, viewing payments, et cetera. And then we have the client facing side, which we think is almost as important, if not more important than the MSP facing side, because again, in the service-based business, the client service-based business, that's, that's very important, right? The relationship between you and your client and also how you handle payments and billing in general. So on the client facing side, we provide a portal where clients can log in, view their invoices, pay their invoices, add payment methods, add additional users. And we do traditional credit card, ACH bank transfer uh, processing, but we also provide something different, which is what we call our working capital solution. So what that does generally provides short term uh, financing. So anywhere from as, as short as net 30 to as long as 12 month financing. And these are for think of, you know, projects. So let's say a client has a $20,000 project, whether it's server migration, hardware, non-hardware related, they can go and finance at the point of sale at the checkout through us, no non-recourse to the, to the MSP. And so it removes the need for the MSP to sell finance. We also provide working capital for the MSP themselves. So let's say they're they're going through a period of you know rough cash flow or the billings aren't coming in as they would expect. We could also provide a bridge um, to in those situations. So we bring that all in one platform, interconnected with the existing tools. Because again, we are exclusively focused on MSPs. We don't work with you know non MSPs. Although we do get a lot of MSPs who want us to essentially work with their clients. But the way we built our solution, which we'll talk about more, is essentially to work within existing workflows, work within the existing tools that MSPs use. All right. Now I'm, I'm doing some quick Googling because yeah. what I heard, uh, I want to make sure that I... I'm using the right terms. Um, so when, when you said that you do uh, flexible financing, even for the MSPs, if we're having some cash mm -hmm. flow issues, are you doing that through invoice factoring or is that no. for something else? No, no, no. So great question. So that comes up often. We definitely don't do invoice factoring. So just 
for, for the audience that, you know, kind of to, to describe the difference. So invoice factoring, uh, a third party purchases the invoice at a discount. Um, and then, you know, when that invoice is paid, you, the, the, the merchant gets the cash at, at a later point. We don't, we don't do that. It, it's a pure working capital loan. So it's, think of it as a line of credit. So it, it depends on a lot of factors, including the size of your business, um, relationship with us and your clients. So um, it could be as high as $150,000. Um, and it's really meant to be short term and really bridge that gap rather than be like, you know, a bank loan, because we're, we're not going to compete with a, a bank loan, for example. Sure. Now, um, you also mentioned that you guys will offer financing to our clients. Mm -hmm. So is that you know, we just click a couple extra buttons and set up your version of we'll call it after pay? Exactly. So exactly. So think of it. it that's very a, a great analogy. So think of it as that consumer like checkout experience where you go and you select the three, six month, 12 month payment option. So you, your clients as an MSP are able to do the exact same thing at the same checkout where they would normally pay by a credit card or ACH. And we actually just announced earlier this week uh, a really awesome program with Great America Financial. So Great America Financial, as you may know, Steve, or a lot in your audience, is you know very long term, uh, large leasing company in the IT space. So now we will be able to also offer long-term leasing. So something between 12, 36 months, up to five year, more traditional hardware as a service type leases. Hey, that's great. Yeah. Super cool. Super excited. Uh, Cedar Rapids, uh, the folks out there at Great America. <laughs> All right. Now, um, let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, your your business, okay? Mm -hmm. So FlexPoint. So how long have you guys been in business? Because you you're offering a bunch of services, but I don't feel like I've heard of you. Yeah, well, that's that's why we're here, I'm trying to get the name out. So uh, we've officially been in business for about two years now. Um, but the reason why I use official versus actually in the market is we spent um, over a year in development. So mm -hmm. um, my my co founder Sam and I. Um, we have a background in finance, so we can talk about that. Um, and so we started uh, first talking to MSPs. I mean, you know, we we, we have a lot of great uh, advisors, investors that have MSPs in their DNA, right? So like people who've been in the space for 30 plus years. And so when we started, we were very intentional about not launching a product without, you know, spending a lot of time in development, but also in testing. So we wanted to get it right the first time. So we spent over a year just developing a product, testing the product with the small group of beta users. We have an advisory council of about 10 different MSPs from you know, small to very large. And so we spent uh, over, over 12 months just testing, developing, and then we'd say we probably, um, in terms of like broader launch into the market, was earlier this year, around end of February, beginning of March, um, and you know we've we've been around ever since. So it's we've we've definitely been around for for a little bit, but we spent most of that time in development, in beta, making sure things were 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 right. I, I love that you're making sure things work too. So that's that's <laughs> a plus. <laughs> right? No, I mean, it, it, jokes aside, it's like you as a as a founder of a business, you're you're, you're trying to move very quickly, right? You're trying yeah. to get to market as fast as possible. But like the problem is if you go out to market and even simple things aren't right, you can have a bit huge misstep, especially in the MSP space, right? Like look at Reddit, right? Someone has a bad experience, they'll go on Reddit, they'll crucify you and then that's gonna be there forever. So it's like mm -hmm. luckily um, we we have had the, the opposite experience. You go on Reddit and you hear people talk about FlexPoint and it's all, you know, pretty positive things. And the best part about Reddit is if you have a bad experience with Reddit, the only place you can go and complain is Reddit. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> you probably have like a special, special subreddit for complaints about Reddit that gets like, you know, personally assigned to, to the founder of, of Reddit somewhere. Yeah. Though that went real well when they uh, decided to start charging yeah. a ridiculous amount for their API. For the API. And, 
And then what uh, happened, by the way, not to get too off topic, but what ended up happening? Because I know the the blackouts, but did they end up changing the pricing? No. Hmm. No. Uh, A bunch of Reddit browsers went out of business, including my favorite, which was Apollo. I've been using Apollo for (laughs) years and uh, I don't now. So, (laughs) um, so you got to suck it up and, and use the Reddit app or don't use Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, employees, contractors, what, how, how are you doing uh, development for your product? Yeah. Product? So we're, we're all us based. Um, we are a remote team. So I'm actually the only person in New York. Um, most of our team including our CTO and senior engineers are in Minnesota, um, just outside, uh, the twin cities. We have some sales folks in North Carolina, um, and in Texas, we do use um, uh, some outsource development, and that's based in uh, Europe. So okay, and and I personally don't have a problem with that, but I know some MSPs are are finicky, or or maybe just they've got policies in place to protect yeah. their clients' data. Right. right. Um, speaking of our clients' data, let's talk about our our data. So. Mm-hmm. Where's our data stored? So everything is stored in the Azure cloud. So we use, we're, we're, everything's hosted in Azure. And so because we handle payments data, we have to be, um, as you probably know, we have to be very um, intentional about how we handle payment data in order, mm-hmm. in order to accomplish PCI compliance. So what we actually do is our software sits on top of a payment processor called PaySafe. So PaySafe is one of, you know, five global payment processors. So it's a public company, um, you know, very level one compliance when it comes to PCI. And it's, so, it's no different than you saying we, we sit on top of Stripe and just using Stripe's API. No, no, no. So it, it is different. So just important distinction there. So Stripe itself is sits uh, a level above a PaySafe. So oh. they, they are not a processor. So PaySafe, WorldPay, uh, FIS, uh, FISServe, I think. So those are true payment processors. So it's, it's a whole other level of security. So like Stripe, we use an API, a company called Tilde, that connects our software to the processor. So okay. what that does is all payment data does not get stored on our cloud, on our Azure, and actually gets stored at the processor. And so that's super important from both a security standpoint, but also from a PCI compliance standpoint. So what you see, what our customers see is a software layer that sits on top of a paint processor. So, and and I'm going to go back to my Stripe analogy, <laughs> not because not because I think uh, you're lying or anything, but it, only because it's the one I know. Right. right. So I know Stripe um, has the ability to store credit card data and then mm-hmm. they've got their Stripe IDs for that for that stuff. Mm-hmm. Are they are they actually storing it or is it actually being stored at WorldPay or whoever they're sitting on top oh, of? I, I'm not sure who Stripe uses directly um, and, and I can check on that, but they're, they're likely storing on top in a. Uh, a third party processor. And again, okay. it's, it's for this purpose. It's for the purpose of um, peace. Although I will say just to make an important distinction, like the level of um, in terms of like payment data and access, the level of payment data uh, that Stripe has access to versus us is much higher. Right. So they, when, when you look at sort of the, the orchestration layer of payments, so you have, uh, software platforms, you have, you know, ISVs, you have processors. So uh, Stripe sits at a level that's closer to the processor than us. So they, they do have much more uh, access to the data than we do, for example. That's really, that's really cool. I, I just love learning how things work, you know? Yeah, it's, payments is incredibly complicated, honestly. Like it's, and, and it, when it all comes down to, it's really interesting because it all comes down to a small set of payment processors um, and and banks, because a lot of this is is driven by, especially on the ACH network, right? It's all driven by banks. So um, it's it, it really, 
what we all see are the layers above the actual processor. So it's, it's, it's just really interesting. Now, because everything's stored with the payment processor, does that mean we don't have to worry about data sovereignty or any of that, uh, fancy terminology to make sure, oh, uh, well, this, this client of, of FlexPoint, they're in the UK, so it needs to be on the UK servers. This one's in the EU, so it needs to be on the EU servers, et cetera, well, et cetera. Well, there's two parts to that, right? So it's the payment data and then uh, what what's on our servers. So, or not our servers, but our cloud. Um, sure. So like invoices, for example, that's not stuff that is not PCI data. Um, so all that's hosted in the US, but again, we only today, very intentionally, again, this goes back to our, you know, very intentional only 12 months. Like we get so much demand from Canada. We get so many Canadians who are looking to use FlexPlate, but we don't support them. And we also don't support anyone outside the US currently because of exactly this point. So at a certain point, once you start uh, going into Europe specifically, you need to also have um, a cloud instance in in Europe. And so you see this from much larger companies where, where they sort of allow you to host, let's say you're based in Europe, they allow you to host in a data center in Europe as opposed to like a data center in the US. Um, so we haven't reached that level in terms of growth or in terms of customer base to do that. But obviously when we get there, that's something that we'll, we'll have to do. Now today, you guys integrate with um, a, a very, I, I'm impressed with your integrations. You've got on the bookkeeping side, QuickBooks for desktop, QuickBooks mm -hmm. online, and Xero. Yep. And then on the PSA side, you've got Autotask, ConnectWise, uh, Halo PSA, and Synchro. So correct you there. So Halo and Synchro are not live. So those are later this year. That's right. It does say coming soon on your website. Mm -hmm. And I just got excited because I saw the logos. No, no. And didn't no please very that. soon. But, but let me talk about that. because So again, going back to the intentionality. So we actually started. So a lot of people don't do zero, for example. I mean, mm -hmm. even though it's one of the other cloud-based ones. In my but opinion, still, better. A lot of people think it's better. Um, so going back to sort of operational maturity of MSPs, right? So we serve MSPs across the full spectrum of operational maturity. So whether it's a one-man shop transitioning from uh, a break fix to true managed service to, you know, a 50 to 100 person MSP, that's just have sophisticated operations. <laughs> and so, um, wait, Steve, am I still there? Yeah. Okay. So my, my internet sometimes... Uh, we'll crack out. So tell me if I'm, I'm disappearing. So we, we serve the full spectrum. And so in order to serve the full spectrum, we, we realized we had to do two things. So when it comes to billing and invoicing, there, there's two types, right? So what I would say in the, the mid to high end of the operational spectrum, maturity spectrum, you have MSPs that invoice from their PSA. So whether it's ConnectWise or Autotest. And Majority of people will say that's best practice. However, you do have a segment of the market, um, you know, less mature MSPs or you know, growing MSP, whatever you term you want to use, who are invoicing from their accounting software. So when we got started, we made the, the very intentional decision to uh, integrate with all accounting software immediately. So that was day one priority. So QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, and Zero so that we could serve the full spectrum, not just you know MSPs that were billing out of uh, ConnectWise um, or Autotask. So then from that point, we then moved into the PSAs. And what we're doing with the PSA integrations isn't a traditional PSA integration. And what I mean by that is most traditional PSA integrations are you, know, you pull invoices, you pull client information, and you write it back. So what we've done, and I'll, I'll focus on ConnectWise specifically, what we've done with ConnectWise Manage is what we call a dual integration. So um, typically, if you're using a payment solution, um, you have to pick or choose if you want to integrate with Manage or uh, your accounting software. Um, what we've done, and again, this is why it sort of 
I mean, we've been working on it for, for a bit now, is it gives us uh, the ability to integrate to both ways. So into manage and into desktop and into manage and align. So an important thing to highlight there, right, is for a very, very long time, ConnectWise Manage did not have a native integration with QuickBooks Online. Now there, right. there is a tier of Manage that does have a native integration, but from what we understand, it's, it's not really great. So the dual integration um, allows people that are using Manage and QuickBooks Online to sync between Manage and QuickBooks Online without having to pay for a third-party solution. So, you know, there's been these third-party solutions that'll do a sync between Manage and QuickBooks Online, and that's all they do. So what we've done is we've actually created dual integration that solves that issue within a single product. So we're not charging, you know, extra for the sync. It's not a different product that we sell. It's all within sort of the, the, the same integration. So, um, so yeah, so the, the way we've done it, right? So we started with accounting, the PSAs, and then we'll we'll complete sort of the, the primary PSAs. And then from there, we'll look to do um, other solutions. That is really cool, man. I, I like what you're doing there. So uh, to recap, <clears throat> because I want to make sure I'm on the same page with you, yeah. you integrate both with the PSA and with the bookkeeping platform, and you are also the platform that will sync the invoices from one to the other. Yes. Yes. We give you the option. And then you'll, yeah. and then you'll also sync uh, if it's paid back into the PSA. Correct. Correct. Perfect. Big yeah. Yeah. Now I feel like you've already kind of answered the question, but I'll ask it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you doing differently to disrupt the marketplace? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so great question. So I would say, so payments is is our focus today, right? So, and I, I feel like you and I have talked about this before. So um, they, we obviously have competitors. I frankly have nothing but a great opinion of, you know, the competitors in the market. Um, they, they've done a tremendous job over the last 10 years of really uh, helping the market understand and, and really see the value in cash flow, right? See the value in having these tools that will automate your payments, having a portal for your clients. So um, I think today what we're doing um, in a lot of ways is similar, but even little things like a dual integration, right? Doing that from, from, from the outset. So a lot of things are similar, but we're also doing things that are very different and also bringing other tools to, to bear in the same platform. So again, going back to the working capital solutions, right? So that just hasn't existed in, in our space, right? That, that's not something that you could do outside of traditional leasing, now bringing the leasing into one place. It just brings a full suite of solutions into one platform. And I keep using the word platform because that's really our vision, right? So we want to help MSPs run their business through financial tools. And so payments is obviously a big part of that. And that's why we're focused on that today. Um, and we think there's really a great opportunity for us to help MSPs there. But you and I have had this conversation before about sort of the, the realm of possibility and sort of the realm of need within the market. Because at the end of the day, right, MSPs re are really, really good at IT services whether it's security, cybersecurity, managing their clients' infrastructure. But when it comes to running a business, right, oftentimes most MSPs are still small businesses. And, and as, a, as an MSP owner, I can be incredibly lonely, right? Like unless you're part of a peer group, unless you have other friends in the industry, like knowing best practices around billing, invoicing, or even things like payroll or accounts payable, right? That's that you're, you're really much in a silo. So we think there's a huge opportunity for us to not just be your payment solution, but also provide you with additional tools to help you run your business. Awesome. 
So I'm going to skip. So just because I'm sure people are wondering, I sent you a a bazillion questions. Okay. And I'm going to skip over some of them because I think some of these are obvious. Uh, (laughs) What problems are solved for the MSPs? Let's just Mm -hmm. recap all the problems that are solved. You're going to sync all the invoices from, from your PSA into the uh, bookkeeping solution. You're going to help clients pay the invoices, you're going to give options so that way clients can finance, and you're Mm -hmm. going to give MSPs options for uh, short-term lines of credit. So that's a lot of problems solved for MSPs. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll just move on from there. Uh, (laughs) How do you help MSPs get the product up and running? So great, great question. And again, Going back to what I was mentioning right, and really around your question about um, how we differentiate, right? So what we found is when MSPs are looking to adopt uh, a payment software, right? Two of the biggest challenges are, um, one, getting getting yourself onboarded, getting your your MSP onboarded, uh, syncing, getting, getting everything working. But just as big of a challenge if not a bigger challenge is getting your clients onboarded getting your clients to actually go into the portal add payment methods set up auto pay and all that great stuff that really uh increases visibility into cash flow and just makes it super predictable right and so for us we've invested a ton of resources into our onboarding process and we've actually split it up into two different phases so we call it the MSP onboarding side, right? Where we get you onboarded and it's, it's, it's a hybrid self-service where, you know, there's a bunch of stuff you can just do on your own time, register, um, you know, apply for payment processing all within our app, but you can do that on your own time. And then we, we, we um, bring on one of our onboarding specialists to help you with the integration, especially with the dual integration, right? There, there is some time and effort that goes into making sure everything's mapped appropriately, everything's synced. But then the second part to that, the second phase of the onboarding process is what we call the client onboarding process. And so that part is really where we focus and we provide you with templates, we provide you with resources to get your clients onboarded. And so what that means is one, letting your clients know about this new portal, getting them familiar with the portal, but most importantly, getting them to add payment methods so that you can use auto pay and start paying you that way. So we think about it as from from beginning to sort of your first payment as anywhere from a 30 to 45 day process. And the first, to just give you sort of time frame, the first 15 days is kind of focused on getting you the MSP onboarded and the remaining time, the bulk of the rest of the time is making sure your clients get onboarded. And so last thing I'll say on this is just, So even simple things like hurdles around getting your clients using the portal, right? So one of the biggest challenges we found from uh, a lot of our customers that switched over from existing uh, payment solutions is that they had trouble getting their clients to adopt the portal. And what we found was one of the biggest hurdles was around registration. So if you use some of these other uh, payment solutions, one of the things that you have to do as an MSP is you have to sign up and register each and every one of your clients. You have to create accounts for them, you have to add users, and then you have to get your clients to log in. So a lot of friction there, right? And a lot of work for the MSP. So what we've done is we've created a process where we map all of that client information, all those emails, we create uh, accounts on the back end. Uh, automatically, and we use passwordless authentication, so single-use passwords. So client inputs their email into the payment portal. They'll receive a single-use password, and they'll log in, and their portal's ready. They have all their invoices, everything. So that reduces the friction of adoption by the client tremendously. And so what we've seen is a lot of our customers that switched over from another solution where they saw maybe 20 30% adoption by their clients they're seeing 50, 70% adoption by their clients. I love the train. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if people can hear it, but I, my office is literally across the street from the commuter rail uh, in my town. So it's just, 
It's all good, man. It gets, I, it gets worse later in the day. So it's a good thing we're talking now versus like 4 or 5 p.m. when rush hour starts, and then you'll hear yeah. it in three, three minutes. <laughs> oh, that's too good. All right. Um, we're going to do some rapid fire questions because I want to make sure we have plenty of time for a demo. Yep. <clears throat> so let's talk compliance. Obviously, PCI DSS is important. Uh, talk to me about where where does the MSP need to see the compliance, be compliant? How do you help them with that? Absolutely. So we actually just did a, a webinar uh, a week ago on this topic. So uh, about a month and a half ago, there was um, a lot of what we describe as FUD, right? So uh, Intuit sent out these blast emails to a lot of QuickBooks users saying, hey, uh, you need to be PCI compliant. Even if you use QuickBooks payments, you're not PCI compliant. Okay. And uh, people were freaking out. So you saw it on Reddit, you saw it on Facebook. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to take the time. So we had an expert in PCI compliance security. Um, actually used to work at MSP and then went to like uh, banking uh, security. And so uh, we put on a webinar to talk exactly about this, to talk about what, do you as an MSP need to be doing from a PCI compliance standpoint? And the key thing there, right? So a key misconception is if you use a third party software solution, like FlexPoint, for example, you, you don't need to do PCI compliance, right? That's wrong. So the way the PCI compliance rules work, they're incredibly broad. So whether you store credit card information or you process it, you fall under the scope. However, what the requirements for PCI compliance are, are much, much smaller if you outsource your payments. So we we uh, we had a webinar where we talked about, generally speaking, the different categories of, it's, it's called a self-assessment questionnaire, SAQ, and the different categories of where most MSPs who outsource their payments fall into. So SAQA is the primary category where most MSPs who don't have a retail location and outsource their payments will um, will fall into. SAQA doesn't require vulnerability scans, penetration testing, or any of the like scarier things that people hear around PCI compliance. Um, but we took it a step further, right? Because MSPs are trusted advisors when it comes to technology, when it comes to security. So what we found is a lot of our customers we're getting questions from their clients, right? Small businesses, medium-sized businesses across a variety of verticals. And they were asking like, hey, what am I supposed to do? And frankly, what's really interesting is when you ask the question to an MSP and the client, client is like, well, you handle all my security, Steve, right? Cybersecurity, everything else. So you're also doing my security when it comes to payments, right? When it comes to the MSP side, it's like, nope, we, we, don't, we don't do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's this big disconnect. And so we wanted to provide some education around this and like provide MSPs with the first line of defense, right? Here are some basic tools to help answer those questions for your clients around, okay, are they retail locations? Are they taking uh, cards over their phone? Are they taking cards in person? Are they outsourcing payments to help provide MSPs with directional knowledge around all this? And then, you know, as, as we continue to sort of build the business and sort of uh, grow, one of the areas that we are going to be focused on is providing uh, MSPs with tools to not only provide that information to their clients, uh, but also, you know, hopefully in some way monetize it, right, as, as a service, as a value-added service to their clients. Are you guys looking to get any additional compliance like SOC 2 or anything at your data oh, center? Yeah, so SOC 2 is on, on our roadmap. It's just from the from where we are today into sort of what is required as part of SOC 2, right? SOC 2 is really just a, a third-party um, certification of the processes that we have in place. So doing that, the actual certification, is definitely uh, on our roadmap. Let's talk cybersecurity. That's kind of important, right? Yeah. <laughs> Always. Especially when there's thousands of dollars involved. Yeah. Um, well, so I'll, I'll, before before you ask, you know, an important distinction is like 
the transactions themselves, the payment information, and, and this is probably part of what you're asking, that's all occurring on the processor, which is sure. a, a massive sure. public company, and also the banking infrastructure. So just But but there's always there's always someone that'll find a way to like hack into your infrastructure and then like somehow impersonate me as a user and create an invoice for my client and automatically charge them. So that's, yeah. So that's definitely um, a risk. So I would say the risks that come uh, associated with our platform, right. Is uh, someone gets access to your account, creates an invoice, charges, a client for that invoice, right? However, that money that they charge your client would go to your bank account. So they would have to figure out a way to move bank accounts, which is just not very easy. Um, so again, it's you're right. And, and I don't want to make little of any of it because, but, because it's super important, but it's all in different compartments, right? We're talking about where are these transactions, where the data is, the various bank accounts, they're all siloed in many ways and interconnected. So in it really, it, it makes it very difficult to access the full thing, right? The, the full picture. All right, great. So just for the MSP's peace of mind, do you offer uh, multi-factor authentication for us when we log in? So, so let's talk about that. So we, we, we actually, uh, we actually did a blog post. I'll send you and love your, your thoughts on this. So when we created our platform, we very intentionally did not want anything to do with passwords. So everyone probably knows at this point that passwords as a form of security is probably one of the least secure methods, right? Unless mm -hmm. you're using, you know, like a, so are you doing magic link? No, we're not okay. using magic link. We're using one-time passwords. So what what that means is you get, and again, this goes back to building for MSPs, right? So what we do is to access your portal as an MSP, or for your clients to access their portal as a client, they enter their email and they receive a one-time password that's unique to that email address, and is also only good for fifteen right. minutes. And so what that does, right, is it, it removes the risk associated with passwords. So if we were to get hacked for some reason, right, we don't have a database of passwords that can go be yeah. reused across your um, your accounts. So th there's really nothing that people can do if they get access to our database when it comes to accessing uh, accounts outside of, of you know, FlexPoint. And so we are very intentional about that. And the reason why is because, again, think about our market, right? As an MSP, you're handling email security. Not everything is 100% foolproof, right? SMS, we all know about um, sort of the vulnerabilities there with like using SMS as sort of the, the method of authentication. But when it comes to one-time passwords, what we decided was it, it's you're eliminated the risk associated with passwords, but also who's in control of email security, right? It's our customers, our partners, our MSPs. So when you really start to peel the different layers, it's all the security that you as an MSP have in place around email combined with these single use email passwords. So we think that's actually one of the most secure methods. And I think there's differences of opinion on what multi-factor means, but we believe it means it's a multi-factor. You know, we have great people that advise us on stuff like this, like Wes Spencer being one of them. Um, so we do take this very seriously, but at the same time, we do it in a way that is um, for MSPs rather than for just like any industry. So um, I am not a cybersecurity expert. So I, I want to make that very clear. I'm not either. <laughs> um, so, so I want to, I want to share something here. Um, I'm going to add this so that way we can, and, and I don't, I don't need people to be able to read this. I know the the text is all small here. Let me, let me make it a little more manageable. <clears throat> there you go. So this is StreamYard. Okay. And if I pop in my email address, um, it, it takes me to a thing that, uh, offers to let me 
uh, type in a one-time code. They email it to me and then I get my one-time code. Um, when inspecting this URL, you're able to see the post. If I type in uh, the wrong number and, and try and hit login when I'm done, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll see that information post and then it says 403 forbidden. So what I saw a, a guy who claimed to be a cybersecurity whiz, what I saw him doing was figuring out the the code uh, behind this so that way he could post a hundred different choices at a time and and try and basically, okay, so I got 15 minutes to test, I don't know, a, a million options, right? Because... Right. <laughs> um, so I would just I would just say that as as the user, I freaking hate this thing. I wish I could just do single sign on with like Google yeah. or something. Well, so um, yeah, so we actually so uh, on, on our roadmap is single sign on with M- Microsoft, not not Google, but okay. Microsoft is given our our. So, uh, that that makes sense. If you could also add Google for the MSPs that are Google Workspace, that would be great. Right. So, I mean, we'll have both, but just sure. in terms of like priority. Microsoft makes Microsoft. sense for the first one. Right, exactly. That, that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. All right, let me see. Where am I? So we talked about MFA, SSO. What about for our clients? Are you doing the same thing with the it's one-time same, password? It, exactly. It's the same process for both you and your clients. Perfect. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say about your cybersecurity posture? Because I know a lot of MSPs are making note of channel vendors' cybersecurity posture given today's landscape. Yeah, I mean, I would say the most important thing is uh, I'm, I'm a true believer in nothing is 100% secure. So mm-hmm. we rely on our partners. We rely on people like you to, you know, provide us that feedback. And and I think most of our partners will tell you, like, we are very responsive to feedback. So as, you know, there are developments in security, there are developments in in, in uh, requirements, we're, we're going to implement those. We're going to go where the market demands from us. So it's just, it, we're tremendously open to feedback around all things here. We, we don't claim to be an expert, um, I don't think anyone can claim to be an expert and I don't think anyone can claim to be a hundred percent secure. Sure. So we've got about uh, 17 minutes left. You think that's enough time to do a a nice little demo? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So I know you've already got a screen shared. Is that the one we want to put up? Yes, it is. Let me just move some stuff over. All right. All right. All right. Acme dashboard. Acme. Yeah. We should have changed it to, to rocket dashboard. No, right. no, this is perfect. <laughs> so, so before I start talking about features or sort of anything uh, focused on the technology, let, let's, you know, let's talk about sort of value proposition, right? So what, what this actually does is technology, but what it actually, uh, the problems is looking to solve. So there, there's two sides to it. I talked about it, this earlier. So, there's the MSP facing side, right? Which is what you're looking at now. And there's the client facing side. So it's the 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 side where your clients will pay you invoice, etc. And so in order, go, going back to, to the MSP facing side. So in order for us to really work well with your tools and sort of with your workflows, again, going back to the conversation about operational maturity when it comes to invoicing. So whether it's invoicing out of the PSA or invoicing out of your accounting software, we, we, we can accommodate that. And we do that through, again, these integrations, whether it's a dual integration or a single integration with one of, of, of the tools that you're using. And so what that allows us to do is um, provide a seamless experience when it comes to syncing both ways, right? So bi-directionally in, in both towards uh, the PSA, towards the accounting software or backwards. And so what that does, it allows for continuity of workflow. So what you're seeing here, right, this is our main dashboard. So it gives you a very clear picture of what your cash flow looks like, what your inflows look like, um, your invoices. Also gives you a picture of, um, again, very high level 
uh, any open balances from clients, any past due invoices. It just gives you that rich detail, all, all of that information in one centralized location. And that's all done through the sync, right? So that we, we, we sync invoices and client information. And that allows you to essentially um, filter through um, invoices, see the status of the invoices when they're paid and processed. It also allows you to see very detailed information around your clients and the specific relationship between you and your clients when it comes to invoices. So I just clicked on one example client, right? So 0969 Ocean Bureau. And so here I'm able to see all past due invoices for that client, all recent payments for that client, any payment methods that they have on file. Again, you're only able to see the four, the, the last four digits again from from a PCI compliance standpoint, you're able to see whether those, those cards are active, inactive, um, and then you're able to see who has access to the portal from your client side. Um, so it gives you, uh, the, the integrations give you a rich picture of where your billing is in a centralized location. Brings in the information from your PSA, brings in information from uh, your accounting software. And so, um, so what this allows us to do is set up automation. So, so for example, when it goes to sending out invoices, right? Those initial invoices, you wanna automate that process as much as possible. Remove a lot of the manual work from invoicing and getting paid. So we have uh, in invoice automations, whether it's around sending out invoices, whether it's around sending out past due notifications, or notifications around um, auto pay. And this is all done through custom drag and drop templates. So what you're seeing here is you can customize all this. You can, you know, you'll, you'll have your logo, your brand, and then you can customize the message. Very easy to modify, very easy to change. Same thing for, for the rest of these notifications. So whether it's upcoming auto pay, past due um, payment processes. However, what this does is also provide you with a lot of rich data around how your client is interacting with your invoicing and with your payments. So what you're seeing here is, is an example of a notification log for a particular client. So you can see when those emails went out to a client, when that client opened, clicked on an invoice, and you can get that really granular level of information so that if a client's like, hey, Steve, I never got your invoice. You could say, well, you did and you opened it. You just didn't want to pay. Um, so it allows, <laughs> <laughs> allows you to sort of manage that relation uh, in, in a much more, <laughs> again, going back to the client relations side of things, allows you can, to manage that relationship. Better. Can I just say, I really like the notification templates that it's a drag and drop builder. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Might not be... <clears throat> excuse me, it might not be as, I'll call it polished as something like MailChimp or HubSpot, right? Sure. But we're also talking about, I yeah. don't know, multi-million dollar corporations right. versus a company that has been live to the public <sighs> for months. Right. So, and, and well, yeah, so obviously, and it's different use cases too, right? So we'll, we'll iterate on this uh, and, and sort of go where 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 our customers want us to go but um so so yeah this, so that, this yeah. is already gorgeous man truly like the fact that i could just drop in a header and then a divider and then maybe some html and then just some text yeah like this well, is me, already better let, let me jump to something which i think <laughs> a lot of our customers love right so again this is going back to knowing and having a deep uh appreciation for our client what base, right? MSPs. Mm -hmm. Like you guys are working all the time, not just during the day. So dark mode, right? Dark mode's fun. So here you are. <laughs> so allows you to easily uh, jump into dark mode and kind of do your billing uh, even in the middle of the night. But um, so, now, so yeah. <laughs> now I noticed that each customer has um, auto pay options available. Correct. So that's, that's the other beauty of the automations, right? So the way we set up auto pay is uh, there's, there's two options. So you can set up auto pay 
uh, on a global basis. So it applies to all of your clients um, or you can set up auto pay for your specific clients. And so right now this demo account is, is connected to QuickBooks online, but you're able to do the same thing, whether it's desktop, online, zero, ConnectWise Manage, or Autotest. Just has some, some variability in terms of the fields. Um, but what it means is you're able to create rules that are customized for either all of your client base or specific clients based on just natural language. So again, these are the fields for QuickBooks, but they're different for Manage, they're different for, for Autotest. So for example, like Manage calls them uh, contracts, um, and I believe Autotest yeah. calls them. Uh, something else. So same thing. So you're, you're able to get and create granular rules based on even just the message in the invoice. So I can say uh, Steve's invoice, charge him more. And <laughs> <laughs> every invoice that has that message in it will get hit in the auto pay rule. And so that just allows for so much automation when it comes to especially the recurring billing, right? So this is such an important thing for recurring billing for MSPs and, and the recurring side of things. So, and I got to say, that's, that's really cool because uh, with a platform like Connect Booster, mm -hmm. and I, I don't mind name dropping because I'm not saying anything bad about them, okay? Yeah, just want to just want to clarify that. Yeah. So I remember when I used them years ago now, um, that I could, for example, if I've got a contract in Autotask where I'm invoicing the client the same amount of money every month, mm -hmm. I could auto pay that contract, but still have the other invoices, like when I sell them a new computer, exactly. uh, be manual pay. Exactly. With this, I don't necessarily have to go into every single client if I don't want to. I could, for example, have a contract Mm -hmm. invoice template that has an invoice message that says automated payments are activated mm -hmm. and then pay, paste that into here. And now every invoice that has automated pay to, payments are activated in the message, it automatically charges them. Absolutely. And and that's a key. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a key difference that we were very intentional about building, which is it, it's, it's fine to go into each individual client, set up individual rules for each of your clients. You know, some clients have different uh, requirements, but again, the, really when it comes down to managed service, right? The mantra is really, you gotta, you gotta really make things uniform, whether it's yes. your service offerings, um, the products that you use. And so exactly to your point, what we've done is allow you to create a single invoice template for all clients that is for managed services. So sure, for anything outside of managed services, doesn't have to be auto pay. For everything that is uh, managed service, it'll hit auto pay. So it's it's a very important distinction there, for sure. So I, I gotta ask, mm -hmm. this this is cool, man, but what's it cost? So yeah, so we are pricing, so we have a monthly fee. It's not mm -hmm. based, so very, very important distinction it's not based on a revenue share. So other platforms, they will take a percentage of your total monthly volume every month that fluctuates up and down. So if you're starting small, you grow, you get big, they take a bigger chunk. So our pricing starts at $199 a month. So it's month to month. You don't need to sign a long-term contract. We believe in our product. So we don't need to lock you into you know, a three-year deal or anything like that. And then it comes, there, there's transactional costs, right? So for mm -hmm. ACH, for example, ACH, we don't take a percentage of your ACH. We charge you 25 cents. So it's, it's basically free. Um, it's free to the client. Credit cards, we, we do two things. If you want to pay for credit cards, we offer what's called Interchange Plus. So again, going back to how payments, especially credit card payments, are, are pretty complex. So um, different credit cards have different fees associated with them, right? So like Visa okay. and MasterCard could be 2.2%. And again, business credit cards versus consumer credit cards have huge differences. Consumer and, and, credit cards are- And what rewards packages they have. And absolutely, yeah, there's, absolutely. There's, 
there's a book. It's it's as big as the book that they use to determine your car's value. And this book tells you all the different rates and fees and everything for all the reward systems. Yeah. I get it, man. And that's why uh, you look at companies like Stripe and Square and they're like, you know what? Let's just charge 3.3% plus right. 50 cents or, or whatever, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, but, so actually we don't do that because that ends up being more cost to you. So the 3.3... Three point whatever, three point five actually ends up being more expensive in the aggregate, right? And you're right; all this information is is public. You can see what Visa and Mastercard charge on each individual card. Um, so we also have the ability to surcharge. So if your client, if you want your clients to pay credit card fees, we also have that ability. So you can do that nice. as well. Yeah, very cool. Now let's let's talk about the. Um uh credit card fees Mm -hmm. so this is just me being nosy okay uh so you charge 199 a month for the platform but don't you also get a a little little cut of like a like a fraction of a percent yeah i mean that's not so so that's not what so again we charge a monthly fee because that's what keeps our business going right so sure. when you think about economics and sort of the business generally, like the monthly fee that we charge is what runs the business. So it, it's it's not it's complicated, but it's not that complicated in the sense that like our monthly fee is what charges what runs our business. All the the credit card surcharges. That's what pays for the hawaii vacation <laughs> for, for me or your client <laughs> it's funny because we say that all the time if your client wants to pay for that vacation you know fine it'll let them they'll just pay the fee but we also i mean not not, not to get uh too derailed i mean another thing where you know we're, we're always trying to provide best practices right it's like you can surcharge your clients if you want but you can also just increase your price every year in your msa right so that it covers the cost of, of credit cards. It just depends on your relationship with your client, right? Mm-hmm. Now, are there any other features or anything that we should be looking at inside your platform here? So the last thing I want to show you, um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second so I can split over, is I'm going to show you the the client-facing side um, in just the last few minutes. Let me just jump to that. Um, all right. Can you see... Uh, can you see everything here or no? Go to dashboard all the way down to the pay button. Yeah, you're only seeing one tab. Huh. How do I show you my whole window? Um, well, it's okay. So I was, I was going to show you the 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 uh, the client portal, but I'll, I'll show you just the, the checkout experience. So again, going back to what we were talking about um, earlier in the conversation, sort of that, you know, consumer-like checkout experience, right? So what we do is when a client goes to pay an invoice, right? They have the options to pay via ACH, uh, via credit card, and also what we call monthly. So we used to be called Lendar. So that's why you see the Lendar um, logo there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so let's say a client has you know a ten thousand dollar, twenty thousand dollar invoice that they want some extra time to pay, right? So again, going back to what I was saying in terms of it's all done within our platform. So Client can choose in this case anywhere from three, six, 12 months. Um, let's just pick six months, for example. They'll have their bank account already connected or they can add a bank account utilizing Plaid. So we use the, the Plaid API. And then they'll click continue to pay. They'll see the amount that's gonna be paid, including the, the finance charge associated with it. They'll click this box. And before I hit pay, I, I just wanna emphasize, this is the full application process for clients to get financing. So they hit pay and that's it. It's literally it. There's no back and forth PDFs, applications. There's no, you know, hard credit score check. It's a soft credit check on the client's business. There's no personal guarantee. Um, Again, because it's short term financing, we turn these things around within 24 hours. So once a client is approved, MSP gets paid the full amount upfront 
we deduct the, the first payment, the first monthly payment from the client's connected bank account, and then each subsequent payment, um, you know, whether it's six months or three months, et cetera. Um, and again, it's non-recourse to the MSP um, and it helps the client out, right? MSP gets paid up front, uh, client gets time to pay the invoice. I mean, I, I don't even need anything, but I just want to buy something and pay you guys a monthly fee for it. <laughs> right, right. It's uh, it's all about flexibility, Steve, right? It's like we, we talk about this a lot. So it's like maybe you have an onboarding fee for new clients. Don't don't lose that client because of onboarding fee that has to be paid up front. Have them pay it over six months, you know, make make it easy for them. So it's it's all about flexibility. Hence the flex play. <laughs> I love it, man. I, I really like what you guys are doing. Um, I think the platform, it, it's already looking good. And I think it's only going to look better as you guys continue to, to, you know, bring on new clients and bring on more investors and however all that works in the background. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so truly I, I want you guys to succeed. Um, I, I want to challenge you MSPs. Did I leave something out? Are, are there burning questions that, that I've overlooked somehow? Uh, drop them in the comments and I will get Victor to, um, I don't know, maybe come back and, and do a, a round two or something. But I'd love to. Yeah, absolutely. This is awesome. I, I, I am so impressed by your product. Uh, MSPs, check it out. F getflexpoint.com. That's right. Get awesome. G-E-T, not like GitHub. Yeah. G-E-T, yeah. flexpoint.com. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right, Steve. Well, thanks for the time, Steve. Really, really enjoyed it. Really en enjoyed showing you uh, what it looks like and, and talking to you. My pleasure. Thanks for coming on. And thank you, everyone, for watching. You all have yourselves a wonderful day and the rest of your week. Awesome. Bye. All right.